Hello and welcome. I am Dr. Lara May, a clinical pharmacist specializing in functional medicine, as well as a certified yoga teacher and Reiki master. I run a truly integrative health coaching practice, encompassing functional medicine lab testing, yoga and meditation, and a sprinkling of Reiki energy medicine. Join me here on Light Body Radio to break through your health plateau and come into alignment with your natural vitality. not at home for the holidays, which is really exciting. Obviously staying very COVID safe, keeping distance, and obviously wearing my mask as much as I can and I should. Um, That's really important, especially over the holidays. So guys, don't worry about that. Um, But I'm actually here in sunny Florida, and I will show you a beautiful picture of the beach that I'm staying at, but I can't um, (laughs) because it's dark outside. Um, But I'll be back in Raleigh really soon, so no worries on that. But Anyways, guys, tonight I'm super excited because I have Dr. Lara May coming on, who is um, going to talk to us a little bit about indulging during the holidays and the new year, and then a little bit about the diets and the fad diets and all of the things that come with New Year's. So we're getting inundated with marketing right now, obviously, of all of these deals and New Year's resolutions are on our minds, and especially after such a hard year in 2020. A lot of people have really big hopes and dreams for 2021, and so how do we prioritize what that looks like for our health and our wellness, but also what do we want to focus our time and our efforts on, right? So sometimes that looks a little bit more like spending more time in the gym or spending time on our fitness, but maybe that also looks like eating healthier or eating more nutrient-dense foods or focusing a little bit on that side of things too. So that's what we're going to be talking about today with her, and I'm super excited to have her on. So she'll jump on in just a minute. But in the interim, I did want to talk to you guys a little bit about self-care during the holidays. So Hanukkah started last week. We've got Christmas coming up this week. We have New Year's coming up soon, too. So there's a lot of tension and a lot of busyness happening, right? But make sure that you're taking time for you as well. I'm sure this has been preached by everyone, too, and you're hearing this in marketing as well. But there is no way to take care of other people until you take care of yourself first, right? So... I put this on my story today, but the best relationship you can have is with yourself because if you're not taking care of your wellness from inside, mental, emotional, outside, physical, and fitness-wise, right, then you're not, you won't be able to pour from a full cup, and I'm sure you guys have heard that analogy before too, but especially during a year that's been so crazy and a time that's been so rough, and we all had hopes and dreams for 2020 being the best year yet, right? And I'm sure we're putting that same pressure on ourselves for 2021. But I think it's important to take that step back, especially at the end of the year, and kind of reflect on the things that we did learn and what did happen this year that was great and how we can learn from that and move forward and what we really want to set our sights on in 2021 is realistic, right? So COVID is not going to disappear January 1, 1201 in the morning, right? It's still going to be here and it's still scary and and we're still navigating working from home and all of these other situations. So it is really important that we set good expectations for the new year, that we're giving ourselves some grace from this year and understanding that we did have high hopes, but a lot of our resolutions probably didn't come to fruition, not because we didn't want to or we didn't have the drive, but because it was 2020 and unexpected things happened. So how, um, like, how can we move forward with that, right? So just making the best of what we can. So just keep that in mind, guys. And it looks like Dr. Adding her in. And we'll start talking about all sorts of good nutrition things. Hi, how's it going? Hi, I'm well. Am I sideways for you? <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Hold on, let me fix that. <laughs> no worries. I love it. This is great. <laughs> this is the 21st century, guys. This is what happens. This is how you know it's live. <laughs> awesome. How's things? Good. Things are really good. How are you? I'm well. I just got back from an acupuncture appointment, so I am I'm doing well at the moment. <laughs> 
Perfect. I love that. I love that. Um, so I was just going over a little bit of self-care stuff for 2021, but before we dive into all of the topics I want to cover with you, why don't you give our audience a little bit of a background on you and what you specialize in, what your focus is, and then we can jump in. Sure. Um, my name is Dr. Lara May, and I am a gut health specialist, really, or inflammation specialist, both, kind of. I mean, I think they're pretty married, <laughs> those two. Okay. Um, I, yeah, my background is in clinical pharmacy, and I branched out to integrative nutrition and functional medicine. And so now my purpose and my goal in life is to really help people heal away from their pharmaceuticals in a safe and healthy way and or prevent them from getting there in the first place. Awesome. That's great. And how did you find this as your passion? What, what inspired you to make this your main gig? I think like so many of us, my own struggles. I struggled with chronic migraines, chronic allergies, and um, it got to a point where my IBS was just out of control and everything I tried to do just didn't seem to work and or I would look to my Western medicine practitioners for help and I would get not really what I was looking for to mm -hmm. say it nicely. <laughs> yeah, I smile not because like this is not a happy topic, right? Obviously, this was causing pain and this was a huge pain point for you. But that's exactly my story, too. It was a personal issue and I was so fed up with Western medicine. I was like, something else has to change. Like, I can't always be on supplements. I can't always be taking medication for this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And actually, my acupuncturist that I just saw today, she was instrumental in helping me heal my gut. And she was asking me about it today. I was like, actually, it's really good. And I am so happy to be able to say that. So <laughs> it's like a weight off your shoulders, right? You're like, oh, no, I'm great today. Actually, I feel good. <laughs> yeah. And, I'm, and at, in terms of my gut health, I'm at that point where I'm consistently good. You know, I mean, every now and then you'll have, you know, there'll be something, but it's usually because of something I chose to eat or do. Mm -hmm. And so, um, overall my, my gut health has really healed a lot. And so I'm so grateful. And now I want to bring those tools to other people too. That's great news. Yay. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> and you can tell the smile says it all, right? Like that's genuine yeah. right there. <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's really <laughs> awesome. So I know we had talked a little bit before the call, but I want to jump into let's talking about talking about an overindulgence and holidays and how, you know, sometimes if we are spending it with family or with friends, sometimes that pressure and that societal kind of culture that says, oh, you have to eat this or you should act this way or whatever it is, right? We have all these pressures on us about how to act and what we should and shouldn't be doing during holidays around food in particular. So let's talk a little bit about overindulgence first. So what are some of the cues maybe in social settings or, or some of the situations that we can wiggle our way out of in a very healthy way? So I think we should maybe probably touch on the triggers first. You know, yeah. if you find yourself thinking like, oh, my God, I just have to like have a drink or I have to eat this cake or whatever it is to feel better. I think that's a big sign. And so one of the things that I found to approach it in a more realistic way is to change my expectations around mm -hmm. certain situations and, and maybe actually prepare a little bit better for them. So I think a lot of us are, you know, triggered by COVID right now, maybe being around family and the holidays, all of it. And so it's stressful and sometimes we just want to escape, mm -hmm. but instead of trying to escape, maybe if we changed our thoughts about all of these situations, then we wouldn't feel like, oh my God, I have to do A, B, or C in order to feel better. You know, mm -hmm. we can, you know, we can feel better preemptively ahead of time and yeah. then not be triggered into the, whatever the unhealthy behavior is. Yeah. You know, it's different for everyone. So yeah, absolutely. It's the vacation mentality, right? Well, oh, it's, it's just for this week or it's just this moment or it's just this, but those triggers happen all the time. It's just, we're not always cognizant of what's going on or what's causing it or whatever it is. Right. So fixing it. So we don't have to take a vacation to reset. We have a new day to reset or a new habit to reset or something like that. 
Yeah, so I even like the approach of planning ahead. And some people, you know, they want to be in that vacation, you know, oh, this is a special occasion. This is a holiday. Mm -hmm. um, that's cool. That's, you know, that's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. But if we plan, if we just do a little bit of planning ahead, we can, it can be so helpful for both our bodies and our minds. Yes. And so like, we know there's a Christmas party. I mean, I know with COVID, but there are still get togethers, mm -hmm. <laughs> even if they're smaller, you know, I think if we say, okay, well, I'm going to have two glasses of wine at this party and maybe I'm trying not to drink so much in general. Okay, great. So I'm going to plan to have these two glasses of wine at the party, but that means that I'm also going to plan to not drink on these other days. And so I'm still creating that balance. And in your head, you've already sort of created a lot of it comes back to boundaries and healthy boundaries mm -hmm. and all the different ways, you know, self-care is also healthy boundaries, right? So, <laughs> um, so doing that both with food and alcohol, or even, you know, maybe if you're a cannabis partaker, that's cool too. But, you know, just whatever it is to try to plan more and be a more um, conscious consumer of whatever that thing is and less of an absent-minded consumer. Yeah, absolutely. And going through the motions, right? Don't get, don't get caught up in what's happening around you that you're not focusing on what's happening with you in the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think a lot of our overindulgence comes from that unconsciousness, you know, or like we are stuck in our head, but that's still not a deliberate, intense, you know, intentional place to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you're talking about the planning and I mean, let's say it is a party, right? A, a gathering of 10 or whatever it is, right? So you have this Christmas yeah. party coming up. Are you focused on planning for the positives? Are you focused on planning for if the negatives do happen, this is how we control it or focusing on your triggers? How do you suggest that, um, that people plan around it? So I think the first thing that's really important is that we can control other people's behavior or their actions, right? But no matter how hard we try. <laughs> <laughs> so I think maybe, I, you know, I, I don't want to call it planning for the worst, but I think being prepared because people are humans are habitual mm -hmm. and especially when we get in family dynamics. And so if you I think it's good to be prepared in case there is something like an old argument or a, like, you know, why well, got to be bringing up old stuff? <laughs> it might come up. And so just maybe making a plan for how you're going to handle that, maybe saying, you know, like. I appreciate that that was your experience, but that wasn't my experience and, mm -hmm. or, you know, or maybe just walking away altogether. Um, and then, you know, I, I think always creating an out that's not a food or, or an alcohol is always good. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think it's good. Plan for the good and the bad. So when you see, you know, a table of food in front of you and you can say, oh, well, uh, that's definitely within my plan and that's definitely within my plan, but that's definitely not. And that's OK. <laughs> or you can plan to say, OK, I'm going to give myself today to have this cake or the sweet or whatever, because I know this is my mom's special cobbler, whatever it is, you know, mm -hmm. and I get this once a year and I love it and I know it's made with love. And so give yourself that chance to enjoy those. If you're going to indulge, to enjoy it too, not, and not beat yourself up about it. Yeah. So let's talk about the other side of the coin. That's a really good point too, right? So let's give ourselves some grace. If we do overindulge or maybe we don't follow our plan, X, Y, Z happens, we fall off the wagon, so to speak. Right. But what what do you do as self-care maybe, or how do you respond when your body starts having issues from overindulging? What, what advice do you have? First step is start with self-love and compassion and, you know, just give yourself that it's okay, you know? Yeah, it <laughs> but, happens. You know, it happens yeah, and it's okay. It yeah. So the first step is awareness of like any change that I'm sure, you know, you know, this too is like first step is awareness because we can't change what we're not aware of mm -hmm. and, and, you know, giving yourself that self love and it's okay. And then, you know, immediately making the, okay, well, how can I choose differently? And I think really, you know, making conscious choices and, 
approaching it from what will make my body happy, what will make my mind happy, and really coming at it from a place of what's going to make me feel good so that you're not thinking about it from deprivation. You're like, mm-hmm. not, it's not like, oh my God, I can't have this anymore. And it might be at the beginning and that's okay too. Like allow yourself to feel whatever's coming up. Mm-hmm. I don't get into the like area of like suppressing feelings. So I'm all about feeling the feelings, but then letting them pass mm-hmm. and then move to the space of, okay, now like I can choose to feel good. So what is going to help me to feel good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Being your own best friend instead of being the enemy. Like, how would you help someone else who is in that situation? You wouldn't be beating them up. You wouldn't be telling them they're worthless or whatever self talk you have after overindulging, right? It's more, all right, how can we move past this? Like, we don't dwell, like you said, feel the feelings. And I love that advice. I absolutely love it because if you're hung up on it and you're just feeling bad about yourself and you don't allow yourself to feel it, there's no way to move on. So then you're just stuck in this cycle and it's just, it's so low and you just end up hurting yourself more than doing any good. And it's just so painful to be a part of and to watch. Right. But like you said, just feeling them and moving on and being able to move forward with it and reflect. Yeah. And I think a lot of it, actually, when we're talking about overindulging, I think a lot of it comes back to because we maybe didn't have healthy boundaries with work or our spouse or our kids or, you know, our community projects, whatever it is, we say yes, 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 yes to everything outside of us. Mm -hmm. And then it gets to that temptation. We're like, yes, I'm going to do that for myself because I deserve it. That's like, "Mm, well, you know, maybe if you, if we weren't over giving, then we would have more to actually give to ourselves in a healthy way. And so Mm -hmm. like, again, being aware of where we maybe know is a healthy sentence and a healthy boundary. And it can be said with love as well. <laughs> so Yes. Screaming from the rooftop. Like it's okay to say no. <laughs> and it yeah. feels good. <laughs> it does. So what are some of the, like I have a lot of clients who usually come to me after overindulging, right? And their first sentence is something along the lines of, well, now I don't want to eat or now I don't feel like I can eat or now, you know, I want to restrict myself in some form or fashion or go overboard on fitness to make up for it or to spend those calories, right? What are some of the mental shifts that we can make if we do overindulge that help us break that cycle? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I think that's hard for all of us because, you know, I think we're culturally conditioned into that oh, I did this thing that's not so good. Now I have to make up for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do that by going overboard. And so I just really feel like creating your own um, balance and Mm -hmm. and like whatever that is with scheduling or, um, you know, food planning. And so I think, you know, like going to your fridge and saying, okay, or going to your pantry and like, okay, like what in here is not good for me? Maybe doing a pantry clean out. And really starting, giving yourself a clean slate to start from, and then you can add back in all the good things that you want to eat. Because, Mm -hmm. I mean, we all have good things that we want to eat. Mm -hmm. I really believe that. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, there, there are comfort foods that are also nutrient dense that are good for you, right? So if you have an overindulging moment, go back to that nutrient dense comfort food and get the nutrients back to your body, right? It's yeah. almost like flipping the script in a way because you are, if you're overindulging, chances are it wasn't on something that was super great for you, right? You're not overindulging on salads, right? It's usually like you said, cakes, casseroles, that kind of stuff, right? Your mom's famous pecan pie. But then you're almost restricting yourself from nutrients because you're filling yourself up with almost empty carbs, essentially, right? So you're restricting. And now if you restrict more, that's not helping you. You're not replenishing yourself. You're not giving yourself any energy. So being able to flip that script and and see that, right? And then start from a clean slate where what foods can you have that are great? What is my comfort food that I love? And then go to that and then move, move forward. Yeah. And I think also to um, definitely, like you said, like nutrient dense, like filling in with as much variety as possible. I think a lot of us, especially if we're dealing with like gut something or, you know, maybe we're not, but you know, some people just have a tendency to restrict, restrict, restrict. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe like when we maybe first go to the keto or paleo style of eating, we think, oh, we have to cut all these things out. We can only eat this. (laughs) 
And so I think this that's a tiny to... part of nutrients. This is the only thing you can yeah. have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I really think like eating the rainbow year round. And so I'm a really big proponent of seasonal eating. Yes. So like right now, parsnip, carrots, sweet potatoes, you know, root warming things mm-hmm. and um, you know, salads, yes, but also maybe like having those greens in a steamed or, you know, a blanched warm way because it's, you know, we want to balance with our outside temperature and, you know, sort of like that, the Ayurvedic style of, um, you know, balancing that yin and yang. And um, so there's so many options. And I feel like, I feel like it's really easy for us to forget that. Like when we think about cutting out the stuff that's quote, not good for us, then mm-hmm. our mind automatically goes into that scarcity mindset and panic of, oh God, now I can only <laughs> eat five things and, <laughs> and it's going to stop I'm gonna eat it, you know, all these things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's a mental side too, right? Like you're, you feel like you're restricting and now you have to restrict more or you weren't restricted and now you have to control more or whatever that shift is. And it's just being able to step back and notice that that's what you're doing. And then settle into it and move forward. Same as your feelings, just mentally, right? See what you're doing and move forward. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely having that self-forgiveness aspect and then just making that next step forward. Like don't get stuck in the paralysis of beating up on yourself. Yeah. Um, Repeat that. The paralysis of beating yeah. up on yourself. <laughs> oh, that is so, yeah. that is so the script too, right? That's what we're fed. That's what we do. It's normal to do that. And it's so negative. It's so bad. And it's so self-defeating. Like it's not productive and it yeah. doesn't make us feel better, but no. it's our habit that we're in. <laughs> yep. Over and over and over. It's so painful. Yeah. So with New Year's coming up, um, aside from overindulgence, right, over the holidays, but with New Year's coming up comes all of this marketing about New Year's resolutions and being more fit or being healthier. And I think this year it hits a little extra hard because of COVID and everyone having quarantined or gaining the quarantine weight or whatever it is. So what are some of the ways that we can plan around New Year's and start to prepare ourselves for that marketing and for everything that we're seeing and friends talking about resolutions about losing weight or going on a diet or something like that? Now it's a big question and encompasses a lot. So good. Yeah. So I think the main thing, and I had a conversation about uh, this with one of my clients the other day because she said, I just want to lose weight. She's like, I know if I lose this weight, I will feel that feel better. And I said, yes, you're right. And she's like, well, how do I do that? And she started going into this whole like exercise thing and like giving me all the reasons why the exercise is going to be too overwhelming. Like all you have to do is eat real food. Mm -hmm. Let's start there. And you know, it's, so if anything, I would say for most of us, just being consistent with that real nutrient dense food. So go to the, you know, grocery store, or if you have a CSA, like the, the farms mm-hmm. that grow the produce, and then you can, you know, subscribe to the box, like mm-hmm. local, I'm not, I'm not talking about HelloFresh or any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. <laughs> like local produce that's grown in the ground near you. <laughs> Um, and I live in Northern California where it's snowy right now. So I have to buy, I do subscribe to one of those boxes and it comes from down the hill. So, mm-hmm. um, but again, like nutrient dense and it's a variety and it's all seasonal. And so start with that and then, you know, maybe evaluate where you are with meat and what kind of meat you're consuming. And if you're a meat consumer, then maybe make an effort to go with something of a cleaner source. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, organic meat at the grocery store or um, butcher box by, you know, delivery. Those are great sources. Again, if you have a local farm near you, support your local farmers for sure. Um, You know, so just making those cognizant and then consistent. So I would suggest planning. And I know a lot of people like roll their eyes, like, ugh, whatever, planning, it sucks. (laughs) Yep. But it's really, it's really turned a lot of things around for me, both with my personal life and my business is when, and I make it fun and I actually look forward to it now because I feel less stress when I know that there is a time or a place already planned mm-hmm. that I don't have to constantly think about where am I supposed to be? What am I going to do? You know, the, the abstract is actually overloading to our little human minds 
And so it, it can create, you know, the decision fatigue. And so make a list of all the things that you think sound yummy when you're not hungry or maybe when you are, but don't go to the grocery store hungry. <laughs> No, nope, that always turns out bad. I don't care who you are or what you say, going to the grocery store hungry never turns out well. <laughs> so make your list of what you want or maybe some recipes that you want to try. Go to the store, stick to the list and stick to the outside of the grocery store. Don't go in the middle. <laughs> and then, you know, just work off of that. And even I would say, like, if you can plan at least 48 hours in advance, then I think that's a good place to start. And so then when you are having those cravings, just stick to your plan. Mm -hmm. Don't give yourself an out. Just say, no, I have bought this food I'm, for this day, for this meal. We're going to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. eventually your body will get used to feeling satiated and satisfied with real food. And so it's, I mean, if, if right now you're a person that is totally like, processed food, lots of sugar, you know, maybe not in the best place dietarily. That's mm -hmm. okay. But know that it's going to, it's going to be challenging, mm -hmm. but you know, just, just be patient with yourself. And if you do quote, fall off the wagon, then that's okay too. Cause mm -hmm. you can just get back. Like the wagon's not broken. It's yeah. just, just <laughs> You're still walking on. alongside it. Just hop back yeah. in. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. And your advice about sticking to the outside of the grocery store, and I know that's very common in our industry that we, we kind of throw that out there, but can you explain a little bit more about why that's so important just so everybody knows? Yes. So for most, I think all grocery stores, the produce aisle is on the outside, the dairy and eggs and meat are on the back usually. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you might have, I don't know, the What's on the other side? It's a, it's a square. The front is the registers. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> all the good stuff is on the outside, and all the bad stuff is on the inside. And I mean yeah. bad, you know, the, pro the processed things. And so your chips, your macaroni and cheese, um, you know, there's not a lot in the middle that's going to be helpful. If you want some rice, that's going to be in the middle. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, pasta sauce. That could be okay too. That's going to be in the middle. But in general, when you're looking to just eat some meat and vegetables, mm -hmm. which is what I recommend, it's super simple. And there's a lot of variety there. It sounds like it could get boring, but I mean, meat and vegetables, come on. That's, there's, <laughs> there's <laughs> literally endless recipes it. online for that. Yeah. <laughs> Put in what you have or what's in the grocery store or what you're craving, and there will be a recipe, I promise. <laughs> you might have to scroll exactly. a little bit to pass the like super popular <laughs> ones, but you'll find something that's delicious. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but like all your sodas, all your cookies, cakes, all that stuff is in the middle. And so that's why when we say stick to the outsides, because we want you to focus on the real food, eggs, meat, produce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And to your point about butcher box and buying from a local CSA, and if you're in somewhere warm, you can buy from your local farm or something like that. Buying local not only helps to support your communities, especially during such a hard year, but another reason to do it is because you're buying from local, right? Like the, the foods are grown there or they're breeded there or whatever, but why is that so important? So our, the buying, the buying local mm -hmm. in terms of like nutrition. Yep. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, so a lot of our factory farms and like big, big company farm, like uh, Driscoll, I think is a, probably a name that we all recognize on like berries and things. Those farms, they do mass production and they really don't treat their land very well. They sort of overuse it and they don't give it enough time to replenish and they don't do the things that the soil needs to be to, to replenish the nutrients. And they use all these crazy fertilizers and chemicals, which are also not good. Mm -hmm. So there's is a multifactorial thing that if you look at the small farms, I mean, it's usually a family owned, it's land that they care about and they love and it's their livelihood. So they have to take care of it. And usually 
you know, they will help each other out. So like they, you know, you might have this one farm over here that grows strawberries and melons and all these different fruits and things, but they need manure for the fertilizer and to replenish the soil. So they get that from their neighbor farm over here that's doing the pigs and the cows and all that, you know, good yumminess. And so it's nutrient dense comes from the in order for your vegetables to be nutrient dense, that comes from the roots that come from the dirt. And so if you're even, you know, start, start somewhere, buy vegetables, but beyond that, if you can buy organic or local, then your vegetables will be even more nutrient dense, which is really what we all need. So we're mm-hmm. getting that selenium from, you know, and zinc and all of these micronutrients that our body needs in order to function properly. Mm -hmm. that are like you said lacking from the bigger farms and people who are just you know the big corporations and uh, big corporations right but they are they don't care as much and they don't care if your sweet potato has the same amount of nutrients as a farm down the road because that's not their competition right so it is more nutrient dense made with love but also right if you have a csa it's already done for you. You don't have to do any of the picking usually. They just have the box of seasonal food and then you can create what you want with it. But it kind of takes out, like you were saying before, the decision fatigue. You just pick up your CSA box or it gets delivered and then you have what you need for the week and then you're good to go. (laughs) Yes, I love it. I also am not a big fan of going to the grocery store. Same. <laughs> yeah, especially now, right? Like you can do the shopping online and someone can deliver it to you. But even that sometimes gets so overwhelming that you just like not no, just pick up my box, my CSA, find out what's in it, make something delicious. Um, yeah. it looks like so we have two questions. So one is that um, there's a healthy food section in every supermarket. So what does that mean for everything else? Haha, obviously it's not as good, right? It's the processed foods, right? You'll never find processed food in your healthy food section. Going back to what you were saying, sticking to the outside of the store. Um, they also, he had a question about B12 in soil. Um, so do you have any thoughts on that? Um, you know, I, I will say that most of our most dense B12 sources are animal sources animal sources. And that's why vegetarians and vegans usually have B12 deficiency. And I am not, a, I'm a fan of supplements, but I'm not a fan of over supplementing when it's unnecessary. And so mm-hmm. um, I'm always a fan of testing first before we supplement. But I will say that if you are in need of B12, then it's either going to really come from an animal source or like an egg or liver or, you know, um, or something like that, mm-hmm. or a supplement, not a lot of B12 in vegetables anyway. Mm-hmm. It's not there. Yeah, no, that's great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Live interaction there. That was good. Um, yeah, yeah. Perfect. That's so, a good question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's go a little bit onto that topic of vegan and vegetarianism versus eating meat, especially when it comes to, like you were mentioning before, supplementing or over supplementing. I know sometimes it's really easy to jump onto a bandwagon of like, you need your greens that you see all the time on Instagram, or you need the reds because they have X, Y, and Z in them too, right? So then we end up almost with, you know, all of these supplements that we're taking on a daily basis that aren't really necessary. So what are some of the trends you notice for vegans, vegetarians, meat eaters of what they're lacking if they don't have a nutrient rich diet versus maybe what they need to be supplementing with like the B12? Yeah. So, um, let's see what else. I mean, there's just such, I don't know if I can really say like across the board, make generalizations, <laughs> except for that, that B vitamin and the B12 because they're specifically not eating meat. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say that in general, I think a lot of us don't realize it, but we are deficient in zinc and selenium mm-hmm. and that directly correlates back with our immune system. And so those two, especially right now are uber, uber important. And so, um, I take myself personally a little, it's a multi-trace vitamin. And so it has all of, and they're called trace because they're micronutrients, meaning that our body doesn't need them in a large amount, but they are essential to its functioning. Mm -hmm. And that includes iodine, selenium, zinc, and um, a lot of molybdenum, you know, some other things too. And so 
I take that because even though I do try to eat as organically and as um, a wide variety as possible, I know just by the nature of even most of our soils that are on good farms are still like struggling with depletion. Mm -hmm. And so I, and I want to support my immune system right now more than ever. And so, mm -hmm. and that's something too, that like, it's very unusual for you to overdo it on those. Mm -hmm. So, but I do always recommend if you can to test yourself first before you jump onto a supplement, unless yep. you're just, like, there's something that you're having that's like a blaring symptom of a deficiency. Mm -hmm. um, so, because even vitamin D, like we're all, we all need vitamin D. Our body only makes it through the skin if you're exposure to sun, you know, and our body actually uses about 10,000 IUs every day at baseline. So, you know, if we're not at least giving it that, then we're usually running at a deficiency. Mm -hmm. But again, because of the way it's metabolized in the body, I do like to see that number before I just throw a vitamin D supplement at someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. Always get tested first if you can or notice the signs or symptoms if you are deficient in something before you just jump on a bandwagon, right? Always do your research, especially with your yeah. own body and what you're about to put in it and why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so let's go back to 2021 and New Year's is coming up quick and all that stuff. We have a bunch of fad diets that are coming out, right? Like everyone knows keto, everyone knows paleo, intermittent fasting. Do you have any advice for people who are looking to lose weight and kind of see that as the easier way of getting into it? Let's say they're eating local now or they're eating organically or they're going to do that as well, but they want a little extra. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Um, I am, oh, okay, how do I say this? <laughs> I, am, I am a fan of intermittent fasting, although there is a curve to get into it and for your body to get used to it. So I would recommend if you want to start doing that, then to maybe work with a health coach or a, you know, a personal trainer that has some nutrition expertise or something so that you're not just going into it blind. Mm -hmm. Um, because if you have any other concomitant diseases, especially diabetes, then intermittent fasting can really mess with your blood sugar, which mm -hmm. if you don't have diabetes is kind of the idea of why we're doing it to mm -hmm. help our body regulate that blood sugar better. But if you have diabetes and you're on any diabetic medications, then doing that intermittent fasting without medical supervision can be a little dangerous. So, mm -hmm. um, so that I like, but you know, with guidance mm -hmm. and I like paleo as well, because I feel like it actually doesn't restrict too much. Okay. And so I think that's an easy one for people relative to where I'm going to go next, which is keto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like if you think about like whole 30, you know, that's very paleo. -esque. So like, I think we started with paleo like back in the, you know, mid to the 2000, early 2000s. And that was like the fad term. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of new things have come out that are still just paleo in a different coat, really. They're just disguised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so I like paleo and I like Whole30, you know, and I like the fact that the, um, I forget the, the lady, the woman, the wonderful person that created Whole30, what her name is, but um, I like her book and the, and the way she guides people through it with that. And so if you, if you're doing this on your own, I think that's actually a good place to start. Mm -hmm. That's not fatty. It's not too restrictive and it gives you a good guideline step-by-step -step and like foods that you, you can eat and lots of recipes. So that's good. Cause that's all support. So the, like the whole thing with any new decision or new path is support. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this. And you're like, Sh shit, can I curse? I'm like, how do I do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and then there's keto. And keto has its place and it can be helpful, but it's, I do think it's hard. I did keto myself for a while and I got to a place where I could maintain it. But then being female, you know, keto and female is a very delicate balance. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the thing that I think we found as keto has 
been with us longer is that females need to cycle in and out of keto. Mm -hmm. And so again, like if you're not familiar with your body cycles and like, you know, you really need to tune in and really listen to your body and know when to go back to a more balanced, like meat and vegetables type of eating scale, you know, like just Mm -hmm. clean. I like Mm -hmm. to call it clean eating instead of paleo now because (laughs) it's just a simple, (laughs) yeah, Yeah. just clean, just eat clean. Um, So yeah, like again, like keto has, does have its place, but I I don't like it without supervision, especially for most people, because it can be really jarring to a female system and it can be really challenging. Um, And this way men, men just have it easier. (laughs) 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 <laughs> again <laughs> foiled once yeah. more <laughs> yeah because I mean, I'm a big fan of people like Ben Greenfield and Peter Atia and these these people and doctors that have shown all the benefits and like yes but that's not the reality for a lot of people mm-hmm. so yeah and I think one more thing that you kind of that you touched on in that is that well one was support right whatever you're choosing to do if it's different than what you're currently doing you need support, whether that is a coach or a doctor that you're working with or both, or if that's someone that you can go to in a group or your friends or someone, right? Just make sure that they're educated on what you're doing and why you're doing it. But the other thing was that sometimes it is just the cycle, right? If you are eating healthy and you're exercising, that's good, unless you have a goal of something in particular, right? That's attainable and achievable and sustainable. But if you're cycling through these, would you say, Like how long, like you were mentioning, being able to cycle in and out of specific diets, is that something that you want to do every month, three months, six months? What does that cycle look like? Or does it depend on the person or the goal? Both. Yeah, I think it depends on the goal and the person. Um, I, you know, especially again for women, our hormones really dictate so much of our life. For, you know, it's, it, that just is mm-hmm. what it is. And mm-hmm. So when we are keto, it can, keto can actually sometimes suppress our adrenals. And then some of these other things can start to, you know, fall in line, like a line of dominoes mm-hmm. and not the best way. And so that's why I would say each individual person um, is different because mm-hmm. a lot of it too is dependent upon our stress level and what kind of lifestyle we lead. So are we getting enough sleep? Are we getting enough like uh, nourishing exercise and not burning ourselves out at the gym? You know, um, because I'm a huge fan. I'm a former athlete myself and I still, you know, very active, but I definitely know what it's like as an athlete to be at that burnout point too. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, you're like, okay, well, I need to go and work out or, you know, I need to get ready for this competition, but mm-hmm. I am so, I burnt myself out so much that I am so tired that even if I go work out, I'm just going to make myself more tired. You know, like your body's not healing mm-hmm. um, when you get to a certain point too. So yeah. About listening creating- to your body, right. And creating that yeah. balance. Yeah. So and it's it good be- to have pride. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's a really good point too, is that it is, it's so hard to, there is no generalization, right? For every, every single person's health is different. Every single person's health journey is different and it's not weight loss. Weight loss is the side effect of becoming healthier, right? You go out to lose weight, you're really doing yourself a disservice because if that's your only goal, you're not giving yourself a path of success. You're giving yourself a path of a lot of obstacles in the way by not understanding your body. So weight loss is a side effect of becoming healthier and that's the ultimate goal. Instead of a pound, right, a a weight goal, it should be a healthier goal. How do you feel? Is it your gut? Is it your head? Is it your joints? Like what part of your body are you showing symptoms in? And then find the support for it and take those steps towards becoming healthier. Yes. Absolutely. I totally Great. agree. Yeah. So I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but um, is there any other pieces of advice that you can give people for holidays or New Year's or any advice in general for gut health that you want them to be able to take away today? Well, I would say for holidays, 
again, like try to plan as much as you can ahead of time. And it doesn't, you know, like just like we were talking about with the the events or you know, like the specialness, even if it's just the specialness of Christmas dinner or you're having a special Hanukkah dinner or whatever it is, um, go into it with a plan of I, I'm going to allow myself to eat these things. And even if I see this, I'm going to say no or, mm -hmm. you know, so that's my plan for that. Um, for a new year, especially if you're going to make a change, I would say focus, just focus on real food. And if you're doing something that's like we talked about, oh, drastically out of your realm of what your current normal is, find some support. And maybe that's just another friend to do it with you or, you know, but ideally it's someone that has a little bit of extra knowledge and expertise to help you along the way, because mm -hmm. And expect to uh, um, have challenges, and that's okay. And so when those challenges come up, be like, cool, this is a challenge. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to be stronger, and I'm going to be further along down the road on the other side of it. And so definitely just shifting that mindset around the obstacles, regardless of what time of year it is. I think that's <laughs> a good advice. hundred percent. Yes, I love that. And it's so, it's so applicable, right? Like being able to break that cycle, being able to understand yourself a little bit better. That's, that's great. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank um, you so much for your time tonight. I really appreciate it. And for all of your advice, I know it's going to be a really hard time going through the rest of COVID here and into the new year. And we've got a lot of stressful things coming up, but I think some of your points were very well made and I'm super excited for people to be able to take those in and be able to move forward and maybe a little bit more compassionate towards themselves and move forward with a better path. So thank you for that. Um, how thank can people, you. yeah, of course. How can people get in touch with you? I'm obviously going to put your handle in the copy when this is on IGTV, but how else can people reach out to you for more advice? So if you want to contact me to work with me or to have a consult, I'm at uh, laramay at drlaramay.com is my direct email. And okay. um, and you'll my Instagram handle is drlaramay, D-R-L-A-R-A-M-A-Y. So if you see that, then just, you know, that's my name. So it's just my name without the doctor in front. And then <laughs> so direct email is awesome. You can go to my website, too, which is drlaramay.com. And I have a free gut health guide there to get you started. And I actually have like a little bundle. If you just poke around my website, I have little freebies stashed in different places. So there's another one that is a, um, I think it actually is like a three day paleo guide that I provide you with shopping lists and recipes. And then I've also added that like um, a guide on how to help you like kick the sugar habits because that can be really challenging. And so even if we've been indulging through the holidays, but we want to kick that sugar habit later. So that's there. And then that third part of that bundle, there's a little mindfulness um, guide there as well to help you maybe create a new meditation practice for the new year. Wow, oh, that's great. I love that. I'm going to have to find it and download it for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so, so, so much. I really appreciate your time and all of your advice tonight and have an amazing holiday season and a very happy 2021. Thank you. You too. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. Yeah, thank you. Have a great night. Bye.